Hi, in this video we're going to take the two account balance systems and combine them into one business service. The point of their exercise between the last video and this is to show that we need to create a series of transactions that are atomic in nature. That means they either succeed together or fail together as a group. So we're going to do some modification here. We're going to start by creating a new class and we're going to call it business service. So I have banking business service. Of course, the first thing we need to do is set the auto loader. So we're going to create two new functions that will be able to get the balance. So the first function will be called get checking balance. The second function will be called get savings balance. And then for each of these, we will return a value to the, uh, the call that will tell us how much money is in this account. So we're going to utilize the check account data service. So we'll create a new instance of it and then call the method of get balance, save it to balance, and then return it. Then we will repeat the process for the uh, get savings balance function, and we will do the same. So far this looks pretty straightforward, but I'm going to change something now. I'm going to create the connection to the database in the business service and then uh, use that between uh, more than one function. Then I'm going to pass this connection object onto the method below in the data handler here. So I'm going to copy these two lines here and put in the connection here. So as you can see I've forgotten something up here. I need to add the class statement. This is called a uh, banking business service and then put in my begin and end brackets and now we have an actual class here. Now as you remember there is no parameter in the savings account data service there's no constructor yet so let's go create that so starting with a checking data service let's go look and see what the uh, file looks like so if we were to create a new function here uh, for the constructor, we would be able to take a connection string or a connection object and create a new one here. And let's see, I also want to have a property called private here, which is the connection for our data service. So it looks like I did a mistype up here on the constructor. I need to actually say this con equals the, uh, the variable connection. That means we are going to receive a connection from a pre or a higher uh, layer in our in our architecture. So that means this line here, these 15 and 16, these are no longer necessary. So I'm just going to comment them out using my control slash to put the comments in here, and that will eliminate this line. Now down here we're going to have another issue. It says con is no longer defined. However, we have an object called a property called con so we're just going to sneak in the word this arrow con and then it'll work just fine and let's see down here we do not want to close the database yet so I'm going to comment these lines out so we're handling the connection in the business layer here or the business service so before uh, we are done here we better do the connection close so let's see connection close so you can see that we're taking a connection here, passing it to our object below, and then we do our work and return the balance. And then once we're done, we, uh, we can uh, do the close here. What this will allow us to do is, in another function, we're going to have multiple statements with one connection. For right now, though, I need to go and repeat this process for the other items here. So, Below at the uh, update function, we need to comment out some things here. So return is uh, we're gonna we're gonna comment out, out anything that has the word connection, and uh, sneak in the word this con. So the connection string here is not correct. We should have a I think it's a this connection, and down here I forgot we don't want to close yet, so I'm gonna leave that out. Okay, so there's my model for the uh, checking account. I'm going to repeat the entire process for the savings account.
All right, so you can see the code has lost any of the connections uh, statements, and we're using it as a property up here. All right, I'd like to test this out to see what the um, functionality looks like, see if these uh, two methods work, the get checking and get saving. So let's go into the tester area, and uh, let's comment out most everything here just for the moment and then we're going to add a couple of new lines. So we have checking balance and savings balance. All right, so we're not doing any transfers yet. All we're checking is to see if we can get the balance from the account. All right, so it looks like we're ready to go and check our testing. Um, we're going to see if we can get the balance from each account. We're not changing anything yet. We're just checking the balance and then printing it to the screen. So I'm coming to my browser and refreshing. And we, it looks like it's working. So currently I have 600 in checking and 2,400 in savings. All right, I like what I see. So I'm going to copy this line here and replace the first two lines. I'm gonna delete a few more lines, uncomment these lines. And let's see, let's uh, delete all those. All right, so we're, uh, we got a line here that says we got a new service. We're gonna check the balance and print it. We're gonna do some transactions in the middle and then check the balance and print it again. So these two lines here are gonna be different. We need to come up with a new function called transaction. And that transaction will either fail or succeed as a single function. So I'm going back into the business service and I'm going to add this function now called transaction. And I'll give it as a value called transfer as a parameter. So let's uh, set up a connection string and then a return value. And we'll do some work in the middle. Okay, I'm going to introduce a couple of new statements. One is called auto commit. We're going to have a, a uh, auto commit mode and we are going to set it to the word false. So what that does is it delays the actual execution of a SQL statement until we, until we call it later. So later means down here near the bottom of the function, we are going to call the connection string and commit is the, uh, is the command there. So we're going to have to do some execution in between here to check to see if everything's okay before we actually run the commit. The second statement that we're going to use is called begin transaction. And so that means we're ready to start doing our adds and removes. So first of all, we need to get the balance and uh, of the checking account and subtract 100. All right, so I'm going to create a, a new object called check account data service. Okay, so you can see we're passing in a connection string which was defined up here. And it looks like it's going to uh, just use that one single connection. Now we're going to do the update here. So we're going to call the uh, checking checking method here called uh, set or what was it called? Update balance. So now we want to take the uh, checking balance value and subtract 100. Well we don't actually want 100. We want to use the variable in our parameter called transfer. So I'm going to put transfer in instead of 100. Now this will return a success or a failure. Um, so I'm going to say OK checking as a new variable and assign it there. So first of all, we're going to grab the savings balance using the method in our banking service. Then we'll take a, a new object called savings and using this we can get a update balance. So there you have it. We have three uh, lines here that show we have a subtraction from the checking account. And that's the parameter transfer. Then we have a three line group here that shows that we have an addition to the savings account by the amount transfer. Now, none of these actually happen until we check to see if both OK checking and OK savings are OK. They're true, in other words. So we can say this, if uh, OK savings and OK checking are both true, then we're ready to go on. Both of those happen, then we can call the commit statement here. So let's go into here, copy that. And of course, if they don't succeed, if either one of them fails, then we will do a different action. We're going to call this thing rollback. So rollback 
will cancel any of the actions that have happened so far. Then the final thing is we close our connection. So we go here to the last line and type in close. All right, so a little bit of magic we're going through here. We are creating one connection string at the beginning of our transaction using that same connection for both the uh, transfer out of checking and into checking. We'll check to see if both of those are going to work. And if they do, then we should be able to run. All right, so I'm messing things up pretty bad here. So this is supposed to be not balance, but savings balance. Okay, so let's go back into our tester now and let's implement that new transfer function. So we're going to call this thing uh, uh, new banking service, got that up here. We can type in BS and transfer, transaction. And let's transaction $100. And let's see how that goes. Let's save the work and let's go with that. Okay, run it again. Okay, so I had 500, I went to 400. Uh, this was 100, went up, so it looks like it's transferring correctly. Now the point of this test is to see if either one of these things fails, then the whole thing fails. So I'm going to have the savings account fail. I'm going to come into here where it says update balance and change the SQL statement so it doesn't work anymore. I've deleted it or I've changed the uh, table name and let's intentionally sabotage it. So it should not allow any money to be taken from checking unless it is also put into savings. So. All right, so you can see as I'm running, we are not doing any transfers. So the second transfer or second piece of the transfer is failing on savings, which is good. We don't want to have money taken from one account unless it can be put into the other. Okay, so after I've got all of my uh, typos fixed and the uh, code running correctly, it looks like we've got ourselves an atomic transaction where the entire update either succeeds or fails as a group.